when Ed Beach first pitched his concept of what he thought Civilization VII was, it was really cool. And he wanted to know where he could go next. How can he uh, really change the way that players approach a game of Civ? Really bring something new to the table, not just more layers on top of what we already had. By breaking the game up into ages, we're able to simulate better that rise and fall of the civilization and have one turn into another culture and people with their own unique identity and continue to, to build on your empire in a new way. What makes ages interesting is the ability to really focus in on that particular time period, whether it's the interaction between the civs, between the leaders, the nature of that interaction. That's what the age system really allows for that kind of experimentation on a level that has not been seen before in previous Civ titles. When you pick a new government, you know, what does the grocery store owner think about that? When you go to war, what kind of experience do your soldiers go through? These are the kinds of insights that the narrative system offers, these windows into the everyday lives and experiences and reactions of your people to what you are doing as the leader and what is happening during this particular period of time in the history that you're creating. So one of the cool things about Civilization VII that does sort of mirror the ingenuity and creativity of humans is that you have a chance to win the game pretty much at any point. You're never really out of it. When you get to a new age, you get new strategies, you can pivot and change things up. And then in the final age, you get a chance for that sudden death victory to knock out the other players. And even if you were trailing previously, the chance to get that victory at the end is, is pretty much always there for you. One of the coolest new addition too with Ages is the way that you have new cultures emerging based on how you play. So if I'm playing, for example, Confucius, when I go to the next stage, I've already got some lines into, because I'm playing Confucius, I've already unlocked a couple different civilization options that I get to merge into. But depending how I play, if I'm playing, you know, mountainous territory, if I'm playing with things that trigger unlocks for other civilizations, I can change the path of my own history. So when you get to the end of an age, based on how you've played, based on the civ you've chosen, based on the leader you've chosen, that determines the next cultures that are available to you to emerge as you go into the next age. It's a really cool growth mechanic that has you evolving and steering your, your culture as you go through time. When you get to the end of the game, when you get to the end of the modern age, you've got this truly multicultural empire that you've built. What matters at the end of the day is that you've built an empire that you are proud of and that you have had fun building and that you gain satisfaction from. I don't think our audience will ever realize how much they influence the game that we're working on. This is the first place I've worked where we actually look and listen to our fans and then integrate those things into the game to make it a better game. It's kind of like everybody's civilization, not just ours. We love our community. We always say that we have the best fans in gaming, and it's true. We love listening to our community, getting all of the feedback that we can about the game from Civilization VI and games prior. We gather it all, we listen to it, we make tweaks to it. And we've put a lot of that thought and feedback into Civilization VII and continue to build it into the best game possible.